My name is Monkey D. Luffy, and I'm going to be king of the not pirates. Instead, I'm going to be king of the bounty hunters. Yes, that is what I have decided. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have what I promise is a very fun video. Because recently I went something on a mini rant on this channel about the fact that absolutely no relevant bounty hunters actually exist in One Piece. So you know what? We're gonna change that. Because we shall be rewriting history somewhat by changing Luffy's dream into becoming a world-renowned bounty hunter. And more specifically, we're going to see exactly how much Luffy could have made on this career path. Now, there are going to be some very basic rules for the sake of this video, starting with rule number the first. Luffy will be following the exact same trajectory throughout the series, visiting all of the same locations and such that he does as a pirate in the same order as well. Rule number the second, every time he defeats an opponent with an active bounty, that number will then be added to Luffy's world government issued bank account. Thirdly, for Luffy to collect a bounty, he needs to have been the person to deliver the final blow to his target, which means that team efforts do count, but only when Luffy puts in the required work, which sometimes happens and sometimes does not. Fourth, Straw Hat Pirate members in this scenario will all become bounty hunters alongside Luffy, so we're not going to be doing things like trying to cash in Robin and Brooke, both of whom had established bounties when they joined the crew. And our final rule is that, where reasonable, Luffy will attempt to claim the bounties of pirates he encounters, because there's a lot of situations in the series where Luffy becomes friendly with fellow pirates, but that would not be the case as a bounty hunter. And if he has the opportunity opportunity to claim their bounties, then he most certainly will. Now to figure out where we're going to be starting this exploration, we are going to have a quick round of bounty trivia, a very simple mini game where I'm going to ask you a multiple choice question and well, you're gonna answer it. Now should you answer incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in consistent injections of One Piece culture delivered straight into your YouTube feed. And if you do answer correctly, then you may have this bounty candy, which is like a, a coconut covered in delicious chomplet. But here is our trivia question. Question, which of the following antagonists has the lowest bounty? Is it A, Iron May Salvida, B, Captain Blue Jam, or C, Higuma the Bear? What will it be, A, B, or C? Please do select your choice now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it is Iron Mace Alvida with a pitiful five million berries compared to Higuma's eight million and Blue Jam's rather surprising 14.3 million. So if you selected either Higuma or Blue Jam, then you know the thing to do and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. But Alvida is most certainly where we are going to begin. This is Luffy's first opponent who meets all of our wonderful bounty hunting criteria. And I suppose in our canon, Luffy set out from Fushi Village, got shipwrecked and ended up exactly where he wanted to be with one fist buried deep in Alvida's gut whilst the other fist was holding that sweet, sweet 5 million berry reward. And to be clear, I did say that 5 million berries was pretty low, which it is compared to our top pirating standards anyway, but that's about 5,000 US dollars. So not at all a bad day's work for our bounty hunting Luffy. And I imagine he would cash that bounty in pretty immediately at Shellstown, where Luffy would also recruit Zoro, and the two would become something of a bounty hunting duo, the inception of the Straw Hat Hunters. And these two would then put their skills to use in Orange Town, where very notably Luffy does defeat Moji and Richie. However, unfortunately, also notably, neither of them were ever assigned a bounty by the world government. What we do have though is Moji's captain, Buggy the Clown, who Luffy did not technically defeat alone. However, as per our rules, he did deliver the final blow to the clownman, as well as kicked him in the balls on one occasion, which <laughs> hilarious, but ouch. And in any case, this will be an extra 15 million berries straight into the old monkey D bank. Now, something I should note at this stage is that we're going to be changing continuity here a bit because in order to have Luffy claim Buggy and Alvita's bounties, then we need to assume that they are handed over to the Marines, in which case they will not be reappearing in the future because they have been caught and imprisoned, something that will become quite relevant for these two as well as some other characters going forward. Next up, we have Syrup Village though, where the Straw Hat Hunters, now including one Nami, stumble into some cat-related shenaniganry. Here we're really only focused on the captain though, Kuro, because his defeat is going to earn Luffy an extra 16 million delicious berry things. Because despite the fact that Kuro himself had dreams of retirement, his bounty remained on active duty. Unfortunate for him. Now all of that hard work has made us quite hungry, so it's time to stop off at Baratier, where we are going to encounter a truly delicious Don Cree. Oh no. Delicious in terms of bounty, I suppose, not in terms of his, his everything else.
animals. Although what do you think a Don Krieg tastes like? Because I reckon it's like a mixture of sea salt and disappointment. Krieg is quite handily dispatched though, not the easiest of missions, but Luffy prevails nonetheless, adding an extra 17 million berries into his ever expanding Gomu Gomu wallet. And I would assume that some of that 17 million would be spent on further food items from Baratier in order to embark on our next mission to our long park. And whilst we do find our toughest battle yet, Luffy's bounty hunting prowess is certainly not going to fail against Arlong, and we will collect a relatively easy 20 million berries from this encounter. Much of which would assumedly be cashed in at Logtown, where Luffy has no problems whatsoever because he isn't a pirate, thus not attracting the attention of Smoker, nor do Buggy and Alveda return to cause chaos because they have long since been dealt with. It really is more of a brief touristy stop for Luffy to view the gallows of Goldie Roger, and just imagine what it would be like to catch a man with such a massive, throbbing bounty. And that's why we're heading into the Grand Line, I suppose, because despite the fact that in a mere few days, we've earned the equivalent of 73,000 US dollars, East Blue is just not really worth the effort anymore. There is much more money to be made in the Grand Line. Although we do have to wait until Whiskey Peak to make much, Reverse Mountain is very uneventful for a bounty hunter, considering that neither Mr. Nine nor Miss Wednesday had bounties assigned to them. Tisk tisk, what failures? However, on Whiskey Peak, after a slight scuffle with fellow bounty hunter Zoro, Luffy is responsible for defeating Miss Valentine, who held a bounty of 7.5 million berries. However, unfortunately, we can't award Luffy with Mr. Five's bounty because he was dispatched by the aforementioned Zoro. Next up on Little Garden though, Luffy is going to hit his biggest score to date by kicking Mr. Three in the face thing and earning a bounty of 24 million berries, which brings his career total past the 100 million berry mark. Very impressive, Mr. Luffy. Here we do have something of a fateful twist though. Also on Little Garden are the giants Dory and Broggy, who together possess a combined ancient yet still active bounty of 200 million berries. Around twice what Luffy has managed to earn thus far on his journey, so that sounds mighty appealing, yes, yes. And while I don't think that Luffy would have been able to defeat them in a fair fight at this stage anyway, what happened on Little Garden was not at all fair, and Broggy even credited Luffy with being responsible for saving their lives. However, bounty hunter Luffy is going to see this as the score of a lifetime, either allowing the giants to die or taking advantage of the situation to cash them in alive. Either way, we are looking at a pretty damn sweet addition of 200 million berries. Skipping Drum Island now because sure we'll land there, but there is absolutely no money to be made. And as a result, we now find ourselves on Alabaster in the first of many unfortunate situations for Luffy in this particular universe, because his primary opponent during this arc would be Sir Crocodile, which at face value provides a delightful payday of 81 million berries. But there's just one teeny tiny minor problem, which is that Crocodile is a warlord at this stage and his bounty is frozen, meaning that Luffy cannot claim it. So that was, uh, there's a whole lot of effort for a whole lot of nothing. That's all right though, because we can now drown our sorrows in a bar on Jaya Island, where we are bound to find some valuable scum to clean up. And having mistaken that previous sentence for his own name, Bellamy will promptly show up. And despite the fact that he is an absolute scrub that will get one shot by Luffy, this scrub is actually quite the treasure goblin. Because as it turns out, Luffy's singular punch in this situation was worth a whopping 55 million berries. Plus Sarkis also happened to be floating around here. And unfortunately he did choose to make his presence known to Luffy in canon. And and thus he will also not be ignored here, especially with a bounty of 38 million berries to his name. Now, Abra, you should have kept your mouth shut and now you're caught, so suck it, Sarkis. Even better than that though, we have a hefty, hefty score to be made elsewhere on Jaya due to the presence of the Sariyama Alliance, made up primarily of the pirates Mont Blanc Cricket, Salvage King Masura, and Sonar King Shoujo, all three of which have juicy, juicy bounties of 25, 23, and 36 million berries respectively. All of of which belongs to Luffy now because, well, what are they gonna do? They're not gonna stop Luffy beating them up. So together, that's another 84 million berries of pure profit from Jaya. Which is nice because from there we move to Sky Island and well, there are no bounties to be had there whatsoever. Not even in their local currency of x -Top. I suppose Skypeans just don't believe in that sort of government funded vigilante justice. Things get arguably interesting back on the blue sea now, however, because we have a long ring long land to visit, which is usually completely irrelevant in any and all discussions. But in this video, Foxy the Silver Fox has caught our eye because he happens to be worth 24 million berries and no, we are not just going to let that slip away. Davy backfight, whatever, doesn't matter. We are taking him down. 
which means that we have surpassed another career milestone of Luffy having earned over 500 million berries. Entering something of an unfortunate dry spell now, Water 7, the sea train, any slobby, eh, look, they really give us a whole lot of nothing. It's a very marine, world government focused arc, so we don't encounter a lot of pirates, actually, I'm not sure if we encounter any, and we probably won't until Thriller Bark. However, this is another one of those terrible situations where sure, Luffy can defeat Gekko Moria, but his bounty of 320 million berries is frozen due to being a warlord. So once again, a lot of unnecessary effort there, but we do have something of a consolation prize being Charlotte Lola. She happens to be aboard Thriller Bark and worth 24 million berries, which hey, that's enough to pay the bills, so let's go. Now, Sabadi is quite the tricky arc because it's flooded with pirates, but not ones that are conceivable for Luffy to capture, such as the worst generation, Shaki and Silver's Rayleigh, etc. So there's not a whole lot to do here except be separated by Kuma and end up on Amazon Lily. And here Luffy cannot even attempt to capture Boa Hancock, or I suppose he can, but the whole warlord thing means another frozen bounty, although he does fight against both Boa Santa Sonia and Boa Marigold. And they have rather delicious bounties of 40 million berries each, which was a fight that ended in a bit of a weird way in canon, but Luffy was clearly dominating, and so he will pick up both of them, adding another 80 million to the bank. The rest of the Paramount War saga is also quite troublesome because sure, Luffy can go into Impel Down, but none of the pirates in there actually have active bounties. And whilst many at Marineford do, it's nigh on impossible to determine which pirates Luffy would and would not have been able to comfortably capture in all of that chaos. So we're going to have to call that a bit of an unfortunate wash. I mean, I guess Luffy does canonically go up against Mihawk, but even if Luffy could beat him, Mihawk's bounty, like so many others, is frozen. So we've really got to move straight past the time skip and upon returning to Sabadi to meet up with the rest of the Straw Hat Hunters, Luffy does defeat Damara Black, aka Fake Luffy, who had a bounty of 26 million berries. Although this does trigger a bit of an unfortunate paradox because if Luffy was a bounty hunter, then Damara Black would not be impersonating him. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll say that he was pretending to be some other pirate and just take that 26 million anyway, gimme. Diving down to Fishman Island now and there's not a whole lot to be had here. I mean, actually Vanderdecken does have a bounty, a Fishman specific bounty, but that is not paid by the world government. So we won't try to count him and we also don't know what it is. So that's, a, that's a problem. And really the only people of note are Pecoms and Tamago who show up at the end of the arc. Both very valuable by the way. And I don't think it's out of the question to state that Luffy could conceivably beat both adding Pecoms 330 and Tamago's 429 million to the whole, which more than doubles Luffy's career total landing him with a bank of 1 billion 394.5 million berries. Funk has it now and we have the big prize that is Caesar Clown. He is 100% Luffy's target, netting us a profit of 300 million. Very nice. And I guess Luffy does also fight the Eddie Cool Brothers, but they were beaten by both Law and Frankie. Uh, Frankie and Chopper's body, that is. So that's a no-go there. Dress Rosa has the potential to be quite complicated because there's a lot of bountorific beings, especially in the Corridor Coliseum. However, as per the rules of the Coliseum, Luffy may only fight during the matches, which pretty much leaves us with Don Chin Zhao, who is a mighty big fish, actually. A pirate of old with an active bounty of 500 142 million. So yeah, well, we're taking that for sure. Otherwise, Dress Rosa becomes a bit of a marine food situation. There's far too much chaos and too many characters to state with any certainty who Luffy would and would not capture. So we will have to settle for one times Chin Zhao here, especially since Dolphamingo did have a juicy 340 million berries, but oh no, it's frozen. Man, Bounty Hunter Luffy has life pretty rough. Zo is also a bit of a non-event from the perspective of making that their monies. However, Whole Cake Island is going to see our biggest score yet. Firstly, in the form of Charlotte Cracker, who Luffy did need his fellow hunter Nami's help to defeat, but the Biscuit Man was taken down regardless, and he was worth a mighty 850 million berries. Before we take our eyes off the prize, though, we also need to cash in Charlotte Katakuri, because despite your feelings regarding this particular fight, Luffy did still come out on top. Perhaps he has some kind of bounty hunter related plot armor, perhaps not. Either way, Charlotte Katakuri was worth a massive 1 billion and 57 million berries, both of which added to Luffy's bank totals 4 billion 143.5 million berries. And since we don't have anything to add from Wano so far, that's going to be that. But how wild is that? Throughout Luffy's entire career, he has actually earned the equivalent of just over what Shanks is worth as an Emperor of the Sea. And if we were to convert that into good old US currency, that would mean that Luffy had earned over $40 million. Just goes to show that all of those little bounties really do add up and maybe Maybe, just maybe, someone, anyone in this series should consider being a bounty hunter because it's wildly lucrative. But if you'd like to explore
explore these in a bit more depth, then please do check out the Bounty playlist, which breaks down a lot of fun facts about this series, including our highest and lowest ever recorded bounties. Lots of good fun, so I look forward to seeing you there.